In this video, we're gonna continue looking at our Ionic 3 and Firebase integration, but this time we're gonna worry about adding a profile. So we're gonna log in with our user, we're gonna register with our user, and then we're gonna fill out some user data. In this scenario, you might have things like a username if you're making a chat application. Also, you might wanna add things like profile pictures, maybe capture stuff like date of birth and so on. So if we have a quick review, we do of course have an app module that initializes our Angular Fire and of course imports the Angular Fire auth module. Outside of that, we have a login and a register page, each one simply signing in the user and of course allowing the user to register. So let's hit the register button and we'll register with the email address of paul at test.com and the password of passwords. If we hit register, we should then be able to navigate back to our login page and of course, log in with those details. If we do select login, we are navigated to that home page. So what I want to do instead is to make a profile page before that home page. And when the user logs in for the first time, and in this scenario, we're not gonna to check to see whether it is the first time, but we are gonna send that user to the edit profile page. So what I'm going to do is generate a new page with the CLI by saying ionic generate page, and the page is gonna be called profile. As you can see, we've generated a page named profile, and when the user logs in, instead of setting the route to the home page, we can set the route to the profile page. And then inside of the profile page here, we can start off by injecting our Angular Fire auth once again. So we're pulling that in here from Angular Fire 2 slash auth. And we can make a very simple user interface. Now at the moment, I'm only gonna capture one or two things. So we can have an ion item with a label. The first one, maybe we'll capture something like a username. And that will simply be an input with the ng model of username. We'll make the label floating and we'll copy this twice because the next time we'll capture something different like a first name and a last name. And to make this even better, we can make ourselves a new model and I'll call that model the profile.ts and we can export an interface named profile. That profile will have a username of type string, a first name of type string, and a last name of type string. Therefore, we can say profile inside of the profile page is equal to a new object as profile. So we'd have to import that from our models slash profile.ts. Inside of our view, we can then say the profile.username, the profile.firstName, and the last name. If we have a button at the end of all of this, which will have the ion button attribute, the clear and the block with a click event of create profile, we could then make ourselves a function named create profile. And inside of our create profile, we can capture the auth state by saying this .af auth auth state, And this here is now an observable in which we can subscribe to. So we can get the value here. So we can say auth. And then now that we know this auth ID, we can say private AF database. And that comes from Angular Fire database. Let's import that from AngularFire2 slash database. In order to use the AngularFire database, we'll have to import the module by importing the AngularFire database module inside of our root app module.ts, like so. And now we can access the AF database inside of our profile.ts. Now in a production application, I would put this inside of a provider. It just makes things much easier to work with inside of a larger app. 
But now that we have this auth, we can capture that auth ID and we can set our EF database dot list and we can set that to the following. We can save something like the profile slash and then we can say auth dot UID. So what this essentially does is it allows us to access the profile node inside of Firebase slash that person's auth UID. As a result, we can push the this dot profile. After which we can say dot then and after that is complete, we can navigate our user to the home page. In order to ensure we only take one value from our auth state, we can import rxjs add operator take and we can add it here to our observable. We can say that we only want to take one and then subscribe to that. Let's add some text to our button, such as create profile. So let's log in once again at poll at test.com with the password of passwords. And if we hit log in, we now get the option to create a profile. Let's make a username of Paul with the first name of Paul and last name of Halliday. Let's click create profile. You'll notice that we do get navigated to the homepage, but perhaps more importantly, we do now get that user. As we can expect the user to only have one profile, for example, they won't have multiple profiles, we can change this from a list to an object. So let's remove that. And instead of a list here, we can say object. Instead of pushing this object, we need to set the object. And this means we only have one version of the data. Let's log in and create a profile again. And if I hit create profile this time, we can now see that instead of having that extra node, we simply have the node for the user ID and then of course the profile information. So this is one of many ways to generate our profile data. But now if we simply knew that person's user ID, we could query for their profile data. So what we can do is then head back to our homepage now, instead of pushing this onto the nav stack, I want to use set root. This will make it so we don't have a back button when we get navigated to that home page. And inside of the home page at the moment, we are saying to the user, welcome to the application. What I also want to do is inject our database once again. And that comes from the Angular Fire database like before. So if you import that, not only can we display a message to the user, but we can say that the profile data is of type Firebase object observable of type profile. Let's import the object observable from Angular Fire 2 slash database and our profile from our models. Now that we have that, we can set the profile data equal to this.afdatabase.object and then of course pass in the profile slash data.uid. And in this scenario, data is simply auth from our previous page. So it's the same thing, but in this scenario, we called that auth and on home page, we've called it data. So that's all we need to do for our profile data. Now, if we head over to our home.html, I'm going to make some paragraph tags and inside of the paragraph tags, we are going to say profile data and we'll ensure to pipe this as async. We'll add the Elvis operator because it might not exist by the time we come for this data. And then we'll say username. Let's say username before that. And we will then copy this a couple of times, the first time for the first name, then the last name, and change our variable names. 
can add some color to our nav bar as well. And the final thing that I want to do, because we've already created a profile for this user, instead of navigating them to the profile page once again, I'm simply going to navigate them to the home page. You could do your own checks at this point to determine whether the user has already made a profile, but this should now suffice if we log in once again. So if we log in at pollatest.com and then hit log in, we can see that our user data is filled in with the appropriate username, first name and last name. Let's change that so the first name becomes John, the last name becomes Doe and the username John Doe. If we head back to our application, you can see that it's updated and we don't need to refresh the page. This is the beauty of Firebase and WebSockets. And now you should have been able to create a very basic profile creation. The way that we've done this is used the auth ID for a key so we can query for a particular user. And of course, we're setting this here as an object as we don't expect to be making more than one profile. In very select cases, you might want to make this a list, but I can't really think of many for a profile. So that's why we're using an object here. Instead of doing this all on the client, we could also use Cloud Functions for this. I do have a video for Cloud Functions on the channel, so I'll check that out. You could generate the profile entirely on the server. But for now, at a very basic level, that should wrap up how we can make a profile inside of our Ionic and Firebase applications.